It started off with just five elements, air, fire, water, earth, and ether. But now these five elements have been canceled out and become 118. And how are these 118 elements organized, you may ask? Well, in the famous periodic table, which you must have seen everywhere in scientific textbooks and in schools. There is lots to learn about the elements in the periodic table, and I shall be showing that to you in today's PPT. Let's start with the elements of the periodic table as of 2021. What is the periodic table? We should first know this before starting with the elements. Well, the periodic table is practically a table, which means it's a tabular display of the elements. The periodic table is divided into 18 columns, which are known as groups. And it is divided into seven rows, which are known as periods. Each period will see new outer shells, while electrons are added to each outer shell. And by the way, the electrons in the outer shell are known as the valence electrons. Regardless, the periodic table, the first periodic table was created by Dmitry Mendeleev, who was a Russian scientist. Dmitry Mendeleev actually wanted a way to display the existing elements during his time to his chemistry class, but he wanted a simplified version of displaying these elements. As a result, he invented the periodic table and also calculated and predicted the existence of many elements. The periodic table's elements are organized based on order, based on their atomic numbers, that is. Atomic number is basically the number of protons and or electrons in a certain element. And there are a total of 118 elements in the periodic table as of 2021. And out of these 118 elements, around 90-ish are actually occurring on planet Earth. The other elements, believe it or not, are synthetic. Imagine how much science has developed over time. And now that we know what the periodic table is, let's begin with the elements. First off, we have hydrogen with the atomic number one. Hydrogen's symbol is H. It is a gas at room temperature. Hydrogen is a non-metal. It is colorless. Hydrogen is also the world's lightest element because it is actually the first element. Did you know hydrogen was the first element to be formed in the Big Bang? Regardless, hydrogen is an odorless gas, which means you cannot detect it by a smell. Hydrogen is also highly flammable, which makes it a bit dangerous. Hydrogen was earlier used in hydrogen balloons and hydrogen was earlier used in hot air balloons, but now it has been discontinued because it is highly flammable and it might ignite in air. Hydrogen today is used to make rocket fuel, water, it just forms water, etc. We come to the second element now, which is way safer, helium. Helium has an atomic number of two and its symbol is He. It is a gas at room temperature. Helium is a noble gas, which means it is non-reactive. All noble gases are pretty non-reactive because their outer shells are full of eight valence electrons. Helium is a colorless gas and it is non-reactive like all the noble gases. It's odorless and non-toxic, unlike hydrogen. Hydrogen is pretty reactive. Helium, when you breathe it in, also makes a pitch higher. This is due to the fact that helium is the second lightest element. It also has the lowest boiling and melting point of any element. Helium is used in hot air balloons today, airbags, arc welding, etc. Now we come to lithium. Let's start with the metals now. Lithium symbol is Li. It is a solid at room temperature and lithium is kind of the opposite of helium. Helium is non-reactive, but lithium is pretty reactive because after the noble gases, you have the alkali metals. If you move downward, lithium is an alkali metal. Lithium has a silvery white color. I learned that most of the elements in the periodic table have a silvery white color. Regardless, lithium is the world's lightest solid because its atomic number is three and it is the first solid in the periodic table. Lithium is used in batteries, heat resistant glasses, lubricants, etc. We all must have heard of lithium ion batteries by now, right? Regardless, we come to beryllium with the atomic number four. Beryllium symbol is Be. It is a solid at room temperature and it is an alkaline earth metal, which means it belongs to group two in the periodic table. Noble gases belong to group 18. 
alkali metals belong to group one and alkaline earth metals belong to group two in the periodic table. Beryllium has a silvery white color, just like lithium and most of the other elements. Beryllium is pretty strong. It is light and brittle and it's used in cogs and gears to make planes. Now we come to boron. It's a pretty interesting element. Boron has a single letter symbol, which is B. It is a solid at room temperature and it is a metalloid. Metalloids basically have the shared characteristics of both metals as well as non-metals. So we'll get to that a bit later in the slide. Regardless, boron has a pretty dark color. I really like that about it. It is brittle and lustrous. Luster is typically a characteristic which metals possess, which means shininess. And boron is brittle, a characteristic which non-metals possess. Boron is an important trace mineral in our bodies. Now we come to the next element, which is carbon. Carbon symbol is C. It is one of my favorite elements. Carbon is a solid at room temperature. Regardless, carbon is a non-metal. It's pretty well heard of. It is black and lustrous. Carbon kind of has a luster and it is a very dark black in color. Carbon is very strong and it makes up diamonds and graphite naturally. It also makes up nanotubes, fullerenes, and other things. Basically, these, these types of carbon are known as allotropes. Allotropes are basically a pure element existing in many different appearances. Regardless, carbon is used in construction, which is those nanotubes. Diamond is used to make jewelry, etc. Now we come to nitrogen, atomic number seven. Nitrogen symbol is N. It is a gas at room temperature. Nitrogen is a non-metal and it is the most abundant gas on Earth. In Earth's atmosphere, nitrogen exists in around 70% quantity. Nitrogen is used in explosives, plant fertilizers, chip bags. Yes, it is used to preserve chips, etc. Now we come to oxygen, which is pretty well heard of. Oxygen symbol is O. It is a gas at room temperature. It is colorless. Oxygen is a non-metal. It is highly reactive because it forms oxides and ignites. Oxygen is odorless and it is used to create fire, breathing equipment, oxides, etc. So basic, have you guys wondered why our blood is red? Well, it's basically due to oxygen. If you look over here in the PPT, FeO, that means iron oxide is red in color and iron oxide is what gives our blood is what gives our blood a red color, as well as Mars, it's red soil. Oxygen is used to create fire and it is used in many important oxides. Regardless, now we come to fluorine, which is a pretty interesting element because first of all, its symbol is F. Its symbol is F. It is a gas at room temperature because it's pretty light. Fluorine is something called a halogen belonging to group 17 in the periodic table. Halogens stand right before the noble gases and break a rule and break a trend in the periodic table. So here's one of the trends which, which goes like this. As you move to the right side of the periodic table, the elements decrease in order of reactivity. The, the elements reactivity decreases, but not for all the halogens. Fluorine is having a pale yellowish color you can barely see it, but you can see it in small concentrations. Regardless, fluorine is highly toxic. If you breathe it in, it will cause your lungs to fill up with a liquid, which causes asphyxiation, which means death by choking. Fluorine also reacts with every element except for helium and neon. It's one of the most reactive elements. Fluorine is used to make toothpaste. It is in the form of a mineral fluoride. It is used to make nonstick pans in the form of PTFE, and it's used in various other applications. Now we come to the next element, neon with atomic number 10. Its symbol is an E. It's a gas at room temperature. And after the halogens, we get the noble gases, which neon is. Neon is a noble gas, just like helium and some of the other elements and noble gases. And as I said, noble gases are pretty unreactive. Regardless, neon is colorless as Neon is colorless as well as odorless. It 
actually glows red in vacuum. That's the picture you see next to its symbol over here. It also glows when exposed to electricity. That's pretty cool. As a result, neon is used in signs. And can you see that sign on the bottom right? It says subscribe. Please do so because it took a long time to make this PPT. Regardless, we have sodium. Its symbol is an A. It is a solid at room temperature. Sodium is an alkali metal, which comes right after the noble gases. Remember that? And alkali metals are pretty reactive. Sodium has a silvery white color. It is soft. It is so soft, in fact, that you can actually cut it using a knife. Sodium, as I said, is highly reactive because it's an alkali metal. It is used to make salt, sodium chloride, baking soda, sodium bicarbonate, and other useful compounds. Now we come to magnesium with the symbol of Mg, being a solid at room temperature, being an alkali earth metal, having a grayish color, and magnesium is pretty shiny. It is used in pharmaceutical tablets because it's important for our body. It's also used in fire starters and has other applications. So one cool thing about magnesium, magnesium glow, if I ignite magnesium, it will ignite with a white color. Magnesium fire is white. Now we come to aluminum or aluminum. Its symbol is AL. This element is a solid at room temperature and is a post-transition metal. Aluminum or aluminum has a silvery white color. It is pretty lightweight because of its low atomic number. Aluminum or aluminium is used to make foils, cans, utensils, etc. Now we come to the next element, silicon, which is pretty similar to boron in many ways. I'll tell you why. Its symbol is SI. It's a solid at room temperature like boron, and it's a metalloid, which means it shares both the characteristics of metals as well as non-metals. And silicon kind of reminds me of Dawn because it's blue-gray in color, kind of. Silicon has a hard, brittle, and crystalline appearance. Silicon is used to make computer chips, silicones, etc. Now we come to phosphorus. It's also pretty interesting. Its symbol is P. It's a solid at room temperature. It is a non-metal. And what is phosphorus's color, you may ask? Well, it comes in many allotropes. Phosphorus comes in the form of red phosphorus, white phosphorus, black phosphorus, or violet phosphorus. Phosphorus never naturally occurs in pure form because it's a bit reactive. And red phosphorus is used in matchsticks. Other forms of phosphorus are used in LEDs and have other applications. Now we come to sulfur with the symbol of S and it is a solid at room temperature. Sulfur is a non-metal, just like the previous element. It is yellowish in color. Sulfur is also pretty brittle, like most other non-metals. And it is used in pesticides, oil refining, vulcanization of rubber, etc. We'll make a video on vulcanization of rubber in the future. So basically, vulcanization is making rubber a bit stronger because rubber naturally is a bit weak. Now we come to chlorine. Its symbol is Cl. It's a gas at room temperature. And chlorine is a type of element like fluorine known as a halogen. Chlorine has a slightly yellowish color and it's a bit more visible than fluorine. It is very flammable and toxic. Please do not inhale chlorine. Lots of people have died by inhaling it because chlorine causes your lungs to fill up with a liquid which causes asphyxiation. Chlorine is used in disinfectants because it's pretty toxic. It's used to make salts, not just sodium chloride, which we eat, but also other salts, and it has other applications. Now we come to argon. Its symbol is AR. It's a gas at room temperature. Argon is a noble gas. It is colorless, and it grows purple in vacuum tubes. That's what you see in the picture over here. Argon is also pretty non-reactive because it's a noble gas. Argon is used in light bulbs and to store other substances. Now we come to potassium. Its symbol is K because its Latin name is Calium. Potassium symbol 
Potassium is a solid at room temperature and is an alkali metal, which again come after noble gases. Potassium is more reactive than lithium and sodium because the further down in the periodic table you go, the more reactive the alkali metal gets. Potassium is also shiny and lustrous. It is the first metal to be discovered via the electrolysis method. We'll make a video about this later. Potassium is used to adjust soil pH, to make soaps and lots of other things. Did you know that bananas contain potassium? Regardless, calcium. It's pretty well heard of and its symbol is Ca. It's a solid at room temperature. It's an alkaline earth metal. Calcium has a silver gray color and it is found in bones and shells and used to make other compounds and it's important for our bones. Now we come to element number 21, scandium. Let's kind of speed run this PPT. Scandium symbol is SC. It is a solid at room temperature and it is a transition metal. Scandium has a silvery white color and it is pretty soft. Scandium is also light and is used to make aluminum alloys, high intensity lighting, etc. Now we come to titanium with the symbol of Ti, solid at room temperature. Being a titanium is a transition metal. It is having a silver color. It is lustrous. It is durable, light, strong, and corrosion resistant, like the other elements we come across now. Titanium is used in multiple things like electronic products, aircraft, helmets, implants, shavers, etc. Did you know the did you know the Terminators from the Terminator franchise were made of a titanium alloy? Of course, they are science fictional for now. Vanadium. Vanadium symbol is V. It's a solid at room temperature. It's very hard. It has a blue or silvery gray color. It kind of has like a bluish tinge. Vanadium is malleable. It's corrosion resistant. It is used in tools, axles, armor, ceramics, etc. Chromium, its symbol is CR. It's a solid at room temperature. Chromium is a transition metal like most other metals. Chromium has a grayish color with a bluish sheen or a bluish tint, just like vanadium. Chromium is also pretty lustrous. It is hard, although it is a bit brittle, which means it can break pretty easily. Chromium, like the previous elements, is corrosion resistant. It is used in electroplating to harden steel, to make other alloys and multiple other things. Manganese, its symbol is Mn. It is a solid at room temperature. It's hard, although it's brittle. It has a silvery gray color. It can rust. And magnesium is used in important alloys to deoxidize steel, which means to remove oxygen from steel and other things. Iron, its symbol is Fe, based on its Latin name, which is ferrum. Iron, of course, is a solid at room temperature. It's pretty strong, by the way. Iron is a transition metal. And no, it's not pronounced as iron. What the? Iron has a pretty interesting property that is ferromagnetism. Iron is malleable, but it's ductile as well. Iron is malleable as well as ductile. Malleable means it can be bent into several shapes and ductile means it can be bound into wires. Iron is making up Earth's inner core along with aluminum and cobalt in order to make the alnico alloy, which is also pretty magnetic. That's what gives Earth its magnetic field. Regardless, iron oxide is also what makes your blood and Mars red, as I explained when I spoke about oxygen. Iron is used to make steel, chains. It's used in nutrition, machinery, etc. Cobalt, its symbol is CO. It's a solid at room temperature. It's a transition metal and also possesses the magnetic property. It's hard, silver gray and lustrous. It possesses the magnetic property, the ferromagnetic property. We'll make a video about magnets a bit later. And cobalt is used in magnets, alloys for aircraft engines, etc. Now we come to nickel with the symbol of Ni. It's a solid at room temperature. 
Nickel is a transition metal. It is silvery white with a goldenish tinge. Nickel is hard and ductile. It is having a magnetic property, just like iron and cobalt, and is the last of the elements to have a ferromagnetic property as of now. Nickel is used in cathodes, coins, cutlery, etc. Now we come to copper, which is also a very famous element. Its symbol is Cu. It is a solid at room temperature. Copper is soft. It is malleable as well as ductile. It has a reddish brown color, which I really like. And it's a good electrical and heat conductor. Copper is one of the best heat conductors. Copper is used in wires, utensils, coins, etc. Now we come to element number 30, which is zinc. I've spoken a lot now. I'm pretty tired. Regardless, zinc symbol is Zn. It is a solid at room temperature. It's a transition metal. It is having a silver gray color. It is slightly brittle. Zinc also kind of has a self-healing mechanism. That's pretty cool. Zinc is used to galvanize metals, which helps preserve metals from turning into metal oxides. Zinc is also used in some coins. It's used in pharmaceutical tablets and other things. Gallium. Gallium is also pretty cool with the symbol of GA. It's a solid at room temperature. Yeah, and by the way, and by the way, room temperature over here is around zero degrees Celsius. In some hot areas, gallium is turning out to be a liquid because gallium has a low melting point. Regardless, gallium is a post-transition metal. It has a low melting point, as I just explained. It has a silvery color and it's used in circuits, semiconductors, important alloys, etc. Now we come to germanium. Its symbol is GE. It is a solid at room temperature. And no, it's not a transition metal. It's a metalloid. Ga germanium is grayish white in appearance, kind of like other metals. It is hard, although it is brittle. Germanium is also shiny, a characteristic which metals possess. It has semiconducting properties. I'll talk about semiconductors a bit later. Germanium is used in transistors to kill bacteria, infrared detectors, lasers, and other things. Arsenic. Arsenic symbol is AS. It's a solid at room temperature. It is a metalloid just like germanium and boron. Arsenic is also steel gray. Arsenic is highly toxic and it's very dangerous. Arsenic is used in some semiconductors. It's used in poisons and other things. And arsenic also has some sort of... Okay, element number 34, selenium. Selenium symbol is SE. It's a solid at room temperature. It's a non-metal. It has a metallic gray or deep red color. Selenium, like phosphorus and carbon, has two allotropes. I mean... Carbon and potassium. Ca carbon and potassium have more allotropes, but selenium has two. One of the allotropes has a metallic gray color and the other has a kind of red color. Selenium is used to treat dandruff, which means it's used in cosmetics. It's used to strengthen your immune system, etc. Bromine. Bromine symbol is BR. It is a liquid at room temperature. It's actually the first element to be a liquid at room temperature, by the way. There are only two elements which are liquids at room temperature. One is bromine and one is mercury. Bromine is a halogen. It is reddish brown and is very corrosive. Bromine is also very toxic, like all the other halogens, almost all. Bromine also has very dense vapor. And did you know that bromine was three times as dense as water? Regardless, bromine is used in cinematic film. It's used in cinematic film, sanitation, etc. Krypton. Krypton symbol is KR. It's a gas at room temperature. Krypton is a noble gas which comes after halogens. I do not have to explain this hundreds of times now. 
Krypton is tasteless, colorless, and odorless. It only reacts with fluorine to form krypton fluoride. It reacts with fluorine under high temperatures and with certain and with certain isotopes of it. Krypton is used in fluorescent bulbs, photographic flash, etc. Now we come to rubidium, and rubidium symbol is Rb. It's a solid at room temperature. And what comes after noble gases? Of course, alkali metals. Rubidium for now is the most reactive alkali metal. There are more reactive alkali metals, which we will get to in in the future slides. Rubidium is pretty soft like the other alkali metals. It has a silvery white color. It has a low melting point. That's the reason in some areas, rubidium tends to be a liquid. Rubidium was the first alkali metal to have a higher density than water. All the other alkali metals were way too light. Rubidium is used in some atomic clocks very few. It's used in photocells or photovoltaics, and it's used in fireworks. Rubidium gives off a purple flame when ignited. Now we come to strontium. Strontium symbol is SR. It's a solid at room temperature. And what comes after alkaline metals? Well, the alkaline earth metals. Strontium has a silvery yellowish appearance. Yeah, it kind of has a yellowish tint, right? Regardless, selenium, strontium is having a silvery yet yellowish appearance. It has a yellowish tinge to it. Strontium is also pretty soft. It is a bit reactive. And strontium is used in fireworks because it ignites using, because it ignites with a red flame and it's used in some glowing paints. Yttrium, my throat's killing me. Yttrium symbol is Y. It is a solid at room temperature. It is a transition metal. Yttrium has a silver gray color. It is used in lasers, metal strengtheners, etc. Zirconium, atomic number 40. Zirconium symbol is ZR. It is a solid at room temperature. Zirconium is a transition metal. It is very strong. Zirconium is resistant to corrosion and heat. It is pretty shiny. It is silvery gray in color. And zirconium is used in crucibles, electronics, nuclear submarines, etc. Atomic number 41 belongs to niobium with the symbol of NB. It's a solid at room temperature. It's a transition metal. Well, let's just speed run this thing now. Niobium has a light gray color. It is a it has a crystal-like appearance. It's ductile, superconductive and it's used in alloys. Molybdenum, its symbol is MO. It is a solid at room temperature. It's a transition metal. Molybdenum has a silvery gray color. It has high corrosion resistance, just like those elements in the 20s, right? Just like those, it has a high corrosion resistance, just like those elements with atomic number 20. Just like those elements with the atomic numbers ranging from 21 to 25. Regardless, molybdenum has a really high melting point, although it's overtaken by tungsten. Molybdenum is a micronutrient for plants and it's used in alloys. Sorry for the picture covering it. It's used in fertilizers and other things. Technetium. Well, this is interesting because technetium symbol is TC. It is a solid at room temperature. It's a transition metal. And these symbols over here mean two things. First of all, technetium. Technetium is silvery gray in color. And it is the first synthetic element. How cool is that? Humans have managed to... Humans have made several breakthroughs in science by synthesizing elements. Although technetium is radioactive. Technetium for now is used in medical diagnostic image scans, which is used to better see cancers and other things. Well, most radioactive elements have these kind of uses, although not all of them, because some radioactive elements exist in such little quantities that we only have a few atoms of them, mainly because most radioactive elements are synthetic.
Ruthenium. Ruthenium symbol is RU. It is a solid at room temperature. Ruthenium is a transition metal. It's a bit rare. It is silvery white. It's mostly inert, like platinum, because, rut because ruthenium is related to platinum. Ruthenium is used in alloys, chlorine production, etc. Rhodium, which is also pretty rare, its symbol is RH. It is a solid at room temperature. It's a transition metal. Rhodium, like most of the other elements, has a silvery white color. Rhodium is corrosion resistant. Rhodium also has corrosion resistance of some sort. It is related to platinum, just like ruthenium. Rhodium's atomic number, by the way, is 45. Regardless, it is kind of a noble metal. And rhodium is used in catalysts, in catalytic converters. And it has a few other minor applications. Palladium. Palladium symbol is PD with the atomic number 46. It is a solid at room temperature, like most other elements. Palladium is a transition metal. It is silvery white in color. It is related to platinum, just like ruthenium and rhodium. It is shiny in appearance. Platinum, palladium is used in jewelry, catalysts, etc. Silver, we have, we have heard of silver a lot. Silver's symbol is AG because its Latin name is Argentum. It's a solid at room temperature. Silver is a transition metal. It is lustrous, which means it has some sort of shininess. Silver is the most reflective element in the periodic table. It's a good electrical conductor as well. Silver is used in jewelry because it's present in rare quantities and you know, People want to sell jewelry for a ton of money. Silver is used in special cutlery, coins, photovoltaic cells, etc. Cadmium. Cadmium symbol is CD. It is a solid at room temperature. Again, it's a transition metal, of course. It's silvery white. It's soft. And cadmium is used in batteries, some batteries. It's used in cigarettes, which makes cigarettes very toxic. It's used in some paint pigments as well and other things. Indium. And no, indium is not named after India. Indium symbol is IN. It's a solid at room temperature. It's a post-transition metal, which comes after transition metals. Indium is silvery white in color. It's the softest non-alkaline metal. And indium is used in compounds used to make transistors touch screens, etc. And indium is named after indigo, not India. Now we come to atomic number 50, which belongs to tin. Its symbol is SN because its Latin name is stannum or stannus. It's a solid at room temperature. It's a post-transition metal. Tin has a pale silvery color. It has a yellowish hue. Tin is also soft like indium. It is corrosion resistant. And tin is used in tin plating, cans, alloys, etc. And tin's most famous use is in cans, tin cans, you know. Antimony. Antimony symbol is SB because its Latin name is stibium. Antimony, I mean, it kind of sounds sad, right? Regardless, antimony is a solid at room temperature. It's a metalloid, just like boron, silicon, germanium, and arsenic. Antimony is gray in color. It is lustrous like metals, but it is brittle like non-metals. Antimony is used in alloys, semiconductors, etc. Tellurium. Tellurium symbol is Te. It is a solid at room temperature and it is also a metalloid like antimony. Tellurium is silver white in color. It is kind of brittle and tellurium is also shiny. This is a characteristic of metals.
Tellurium is used to vulcanize rubber along with sulfur. It's used to tint glass, etc. Iodine or iodine, its symbol is I, a single letter, is a solid at room temperature, although it's a halogen. And by the way, now you'll start to notice that the further down in the periodic table you go, the less reactive halogens get and also the darker they get. Because fluorine started out with a pale yellow color, chlorine started out with a yellowish green color, which was a bit darker. Bromine started with a dark red color and iodine or iodine has a black violet color and it releases a purple vapor. Iodine is the least reactive, is the least reactive halogen we know of today. Iodine is also used in pharmaceuticals. Iodine is used in pharmaceuticals, dyes, antiseptics, starch testers. You know, you must have done this experiment in school. And it's used in other things. Xenon, after halogens, we get the noble gases. One of them is xenon. Xenon symbol is Xe. It's a gas at room temperature and it's a noble gas. Xenon is colorless, although when put in vacuum, it kind of becomes sky blue or Sierra blue, right? Xenon is odorless and it's used in special lights. Cesium, one of my favorite elements, you'll see why. Its symbol is CS, its atomic number is 55. It is a solid at room temperature, although in some of the pictures it's a liquid because of its low melting point. Cesium is an alkali metal. It has a low melting point. Cesium has a pale gold color, which I really like. And it's used in atomic clocks. And by the way, the International Bureau of Weights and Measures characterizes a single second as the duration of 9,192,631,770 periods of the radiation corresponding to the transition between two hyperfine levels of the ground state of the cesium-133 atom. I will explain what this quote means a bit later. It basically means that the outermost electron of cesium, that's one electron, interacting with the nucleus 9,192,631,770 times results in the passing of one second. Atomic clocks are the most precise timekeeping devices we have of today. That's one of the reasons I like cesium a lot. Barium, its symbol is Ba. It's the 56th element. Barium is a solid at room temperature. It is an alkaline earth metal. Barium is soft. It has a silvery color. It tarnishes in air, just like sodium. Barium is used in diagnostics, oil extraction, paint, etc. And if I may take a quote from the periodic table song, barium is 56, and this is where the table splits. And the lanthanides have just begun. One of them is lanthanum. Oh, shit. One, and if I may take a quote from the periodic table song, barium is 56, and this is where the table splits, where lanthanides have just begun, like lanthanum. Lanthanum symbol is LA. It is a solid at room temperature, and it's a lanthanide. Yeah, that's a new kind of element too now. Now, it's a lanthanide. Lanthanides are... And if you notice for the lanthanides, as well as the actinides, the periodic table kind of splits to accommodate them, just to make everything a bit more cohesive. Lanthanum is malleable. It is silvery white, like most other lanthanides and most other elements. Lanthanum is soft. It is used in camera lens glass and other things. Lanthanum, by the way, is the first of the lanthanides. And let's speed run the lanthanide part, shall we? Because they all have similar appearances. Cerium. Cerium symbol is CE. It's a solid at room temperature. It's a lanthanide. Cerium is silvery white. It's soft. Cerium is ductile as well. It forms sparks when struck. It's one of the, four, it's one of the two elements to do so. Cerium is used in alloys, self-cleaning ovens, etc. Praseodymium which is one of my friend's favorite elements. Here's why. 
for SEO, Dimium is having the symbol of PR. It's a solid at room temperature. It's a lanthanide. It's silvery gray. Praseodymium is used to make permanent magnets and glass. Then praseodymium glass can slow down the speed of light to just several meters per second. The speed of light is approximately 300,000 meters per second, but praseodymium glass can make it slow down to just a few meters per second. That's pretty cool. Praseodymium, as I said, is used in a greenish glass, which slows down light. Now we come to neodymium. Neodymium symbol is ND. It's a solid at room temperature. Neodymium is a lanthanide. It's silvery gray. It's hard. It is having a slight malleability, which means it can be molded into shapes. Neodymium is used in strong magnets, some lasers, etc. Promethium. Now promethium is also pretty interesting. Its symbol is PM. It's a solid at room temperature. As you guessed it, it's a lanthanide. Promethium is silvery white in color. It is radioactive as well as synthetic, just like technetium and most of the elements towards the end. Promethium can actually glow a play. Promethium glows a pale blue or green because of its radioactivity. So basically due to its radioactivity, promethium decays a bit faster than other elements. And that's what results in the glow. The shooting of alpha, beta, and gamma particles results in this. Promethium is now used for research to make some solar cells, etc. Samarium. Samarium symbol is SM. It is a solid at room temperature. It's again boring. It's a lanthanide. Samarium is silvery. It's very stable. And it's used in neutron absorbers, lasers, some magnets, etc. Europium. Its symbol is EU. And by the way, it's named after Europe. Europium is a solid at room temperature. It's a lanthanide. It is silvery white with a yellowish tint. Europium is the most reactive lanthanide, not the most reactive element, but the most reactive in the lanthanide series. Europium is currently used as a neutron absorber. Gadolinium. Gadolinium symbol is GD. It's a solid at room temperature. It's a lanthanide. It's having a slight ductility and malleability level. Gadolinium is slightly magnetic. Slightly. Fuck. Now we come to gadolinium. Now we come to gadolinium. Now we come to, now we come to gadolinium. Its symbol is GD. It's a solid at room temperature. It's a lanthanide. It is slightly malleable and ductile. Gadolinium is also slightly magnetic. Actually, gadolinium oxide is, it's slightly paramagnetic, like aluminum. Gadolinium is also toxic. It is used in MRI machines. Magnets, etc. And by the way, it's used in magnets, which are used in MRI machines. If you might not have guessed that, MRI stands for medical resonance imaging. Terbium. Terbium symbol is TB. It's a solid at room temperature. It's a lanthanide. It's a silvery white. It has a silvery white color. Terbium reacts with water. It is pretty soft. Terbium is also malleable and ductile. And terbium is used in certain compounds and magnorestrictive alloys, which means it can block magnetic fields. Dysprosium, its symbol is dy. It's a solid at room temperature. Dysprosium is a lanthanide. It has a silver color. It's lustrous. It is used in laser materials, lights, discs, etc. Holmium, holmium symbol is HO. It is a solid at room temperature. Holmium is a lanthanide. It is pretty soft. It is slightly malleable, like most of the other lanthanides, actually like all the lanthanides. Holmium has a silvery color and it is used in nuclear control rods to create the world's strongest magnetic fields, etc. Erbium, erbium symbol is ER. It is a solid at room temperature. It's a lanthanide. Erbium is soft. It has a pale silvery color, right? 
and erbium is used in nuclear and metallurgical applications. Metallurgy is basically the extraction of metals from their ores. Thulium, its symbol is TM. It is a solid at room temperature. It's a lanthanide. Thulium is silvery green color. It's soft and used in x-rays and is used in x-ray machines and lasers. Ytorbium, atomic number 70. Only 88 more elements left. Oh, wait, oh, shit. Only 48 more elements left. Holy crap. Okay, ytorbium symbol is YB. It's a solid at room temperature. It's a lanthanide. Ytorbium is kind of soft. It's very ductile. It is used as an industrial catalyst, metal strengthener in some alloys, etc. Lutetium, that's how it's pronounced. Atomic number 71. Lutetium symbol is LU. It's a solid at room temperature. Lutetium is the last lanthanide. It's silvery white. It's corrosion resistant in air and is the strongest lanthanide of all the other lanthanides. It's not very soft. Lutetium is used in the petrol industry mainly. Hafnium. Now we are getting somewhere other than the lanthanides. Its symbol is HF. It's a solid at room temperature. It's a transition metal. It's lustrous. Hafnium has a silvery color. It has a very high melting point. It Hafnium is used in control rods for nuclear submarines. That's pretty cool. It's used in alloys, etc. Tantalum. Tantalum symbol is TA. It is a solid at room temperature. It's a transition metal again. Tantalum has a bluish gray color. I really like it. It is pretty hard. Tantalum is also corrosion. Tantalum is also corrosion resistant. And it is used in special wires, sheets, bars, tantalum foil, etc. Tungsten. It's a bit famous. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. Anyway, its symbol is W because its Latin name is Wolfram. Tantalum is a solid at room temperature. And by the way, whenever I pronounce Wolfram, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Don't kill me, Latin people. Tungsten is a transition metal. It is grayish white. It is lustrous and has the highest melting point of any other metal or any other element for the matter. Tungsten has a melting point of around 3,400 degrees Celsius. Tungsten is used in alloys, light bulb filaments, etc. And did I mention that tungsten is super, super dense and heavy? Regardless, rhenium. Rhenium symbol is RE. It's a solid at room temperature. Rhenium is a transition metal. It's a silvery, it has a silvery gray appearance. Rhenium has the highest boiling point. Rhenium is used in rhenium filaments, catalyst thermistors, which are basically thermal resistors, etc. Even tungsten is used in filaments and tungsten filaments because tungsten is having a very high melting point, right? And hence tungsten and rhenium are used in filaments because when they heat to a high temperature, they start to glow. Osmium, which is one of my favorite elements. Osmium symbol is OS. It's a solid at room temperature. It's a transition metal. And its color? Well, osmium is a bluish gray metal. I really like that bluish tint of it, don't you? Osmium is the world's densest element. I have made an entire video related to osmium as well as hydrogen. I have made an entire video dedicated to osmium as well as a few other elements. Check out the playlist on the eye pole oh, on the top right corner. Regardless, osmium is the densest element, as I said, and its density is around 22.5 grams per centimeter cube, which is a lot. Osmium is the rarest stable element, and it is used in alloys, some expensive fentives, etc. By the way, when I, when I looked at osmium's price, it blew my mind. Iridium, which is also one of my favorite elements. Here's why. Iridium symbol is IR. It is a solid at room temperature. It is a transition metal. It's pretty rare, like osmium. Iridium is silvery white and very, very shiny. Iridium is related to platinum. 
because platinum is the next element now. Regardless, iridium has the highest corrosion resistance of any other element, and it is used in special alloys and other things. Iridium has the second highest. Iridium has the second highest density of any other element. Platinum, pretty famous. Platinum symbol is Pe. Platinum symbol is Pt. It's a solid at room temperature. Platinum is a transition metal. It 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 has a silvery white color. It's very damn expensive. Platinum is super dense. It's ductile. It's pretty shiny, like iridium. And platinum is used in catalysts, jewelry, etc. Gold, one of my favorite elements. Gold symbol is AU. It's a solid at room temperature. It's a Now we come to Rick. What? Now we come to gold with the atomic number seventy-nine, and it's also one of my favorite elements. Here's why. It symbolizes U based on the Latin word aurum. Gold is a solid at room temperature. It's a transition metal. Gold has a goldish yellow color. I really like this color. It's pretty unique in other elements, not being silvery white. Gold is pretty bright as well. It is very unreactive. It only dissolves in a few substances. Gold is used to make foil, like the famous gold foil experiment. Jewelry, coins. Gold plating of electronic components, catalysts, etc., and gold is pretty darn expensive. That's not why it makes it my most. That's not why it makes it one of my most favorite elements. But it's mainly the color, its unreactivity, and its various applications. Mercury, its symbol is Hg, and its atomic number is eighty. Mercury is not to be confused with the planet Mercury. They are practically the same name. Mercury, what the hell? Now we come to mercury with our. Now we come to mercury with atomic number eighty. Mercury symbol is Hg. It is a liquid at room temperature. Mercury is a transition metal and one of the only two elements, like bromine, to be liquid at proper room temperature. Mercury has a silvery grey color. It is very temperature sensitive and, as a result, used in thermometers. Mercury is also pretty toxic. Please do not eat mercury or touch it or whatever. If you have any open cuts, don't touch it. Mercury, as a result, because it is very temperature sensitive, is used in thermometers and pressure measuring devices. You might have heard of millimeters per hg, right, or mm slash hg, which is basically millimeters per mercury. Regardless, atomic number eighty one belongs to thallium, whose symbol is Tl. It's a solid at room temperature and it's a post-transition metal. Thallium has a silvery grey color. It's soft. Thallium is also pretty toxic, like mercury. It has a carcinogenic vapor, which means if I inhale its vapor, it might lead to me getting cancer. Thallium is used in high refractive glass, some rat poisons, although it's been discontinued mostly, etc. Lead. Lead symbol is Pb. It's also kind of famous. It's a solid at room temperature. Lead is a post-transition metal again, and it is silvery blue. Lead is also kind of soft. It is malleable. 
It is pretty heavy and dense. Lead is known for this, although osmium and iridium are around three times denser and heavier than lead. Lead is also toxic. And it's used in batteries, solders, and other things. Bismuth. Bismuth symbol is Bi. It's a solid at room temperature. Bismuth is a post-transition metal. It's silvery gray. I really like its color. Bismuth is used to make iridescent crystals. I mean, it's not used to make it, but it makes iridescent crystals, which are absolutely mwah, beautiful. Bismuth is brittle. It is also pretty lustrous like other metals and is used in medicines like Pepto-Bismol, alloys, cosmetics, etc. Polonium, which is the deadliest element. Its symbol is PO. Polonium is a solid at room temperature. It is a metalloid. Polonium is silver gray. It is the most dangerous element. I felt like including this. It is highly radioactive, as you can see from the sign on the bottom left. Polonium glows blue when it decays. That's pretty cool. And it is used to remove dust from photographic film in satellites, etc. Like a bit of polonium is in some of the Mars rovers. Astatine. Astatine symbol is AT. It's a solid at room temperature. At least that's predicted. Astatine is a hydrogen. It has a grayish black color. That's predicted. You know why? Because astatine not only is highly radioactive, which means it dissipates pretty quickly, but also astatine is the rarest element on Earth. Yeah, it's the rarest naturally occurring element. I also have an in-depth video about astatine, which you can feel free to check out after this video. Astatine is predicted to be a solid at room temperature because we haven't even seen it yet. Astatine is formed from the decay of other radioactive elements like neptunium and uranium. Astatine has a grayish black color because as you go down in the periodic table, the halogens start to get much darker. So it's predicted that astatine will also kind of follow this trend. Astatine currently has no uses. Element number 86 belongs to radon. Radon symbol is Rn. It's a gas at room temperature. It's a noble gas, which comes after halogens, obviously. It's colorless. Radon is radioactive. I mean, that's literally in its name. And as you can see from the sign on the bottom left, it's literally a carcinogenic gas. Radon is used in some cancer therapies. Although it's carcinogenic, it's used to track air masses and other things. Although it has very little uses and is used very little. Francium. Francium symbol is FR. It is a solid at room temperature. And yes, it's named after France, which is in Europe, European, you know. Francium is an alkali metal. It has a silvery gray color. At least that's predicted for francium because francium not only is the most reactive element, it's also the quickest to decay. It actually has a half-life of about 20 seconds. And that means after 20 seconds, half of your francium is gone. And after another 20 seconds, you have a quarter of it left. And afterwards, it's just gone. Francium is also pretty rare on Earth. That's why its color is still predicted. Francium is radioactive, as I said. And it does not have any uses as of now. Francium is the second rarest <laughs> element. I've also made a full video on it. So you can watch it later on. Radium. Radium symbol is RA. It is a solid at room temperature. It's an alkaline earth metal, which comes after alkali metals. Radium has a silvery white color. It glows green in the dark. Radium is radioactive. Radium is named after the sun, not radioactivity. It's named after the sun because, you know, the sun radiates heat. Radium is used in glowing paint, but it is mostly banned because radium is super toxic as well as radioactive. It also is carcinogenic. And I will be telling the story of the radium girls. Me and Ara will be doing this in a future video. Radium, by the way, was discovered by Moffrey Curie, as well as polonium. Actinium. Now we get to the actinides. Its symbol is AC. 
It is a solid at room temperature. It's an actinide. Actinium has a silvery color. It is radioactive. All the actinides, by the way, are radioactive. And all these other elements now towards the end are radioactive. Actinium glows blue when it decays. It is used in some medicines, neutron bombardment, etc. Thorium. Thorium symbol is TH. It's named after the Greek god Thor, not the superhero. Thorium is a solid at room temperature and it's an actinide. Thorium has a silvery color. It is slightly soft like most of the other actinides. It is malleable. Thorium is also radioactive and it is used in some nuclear power plants, catalysts, etc. Let's just speed run all the actinides now. 91 belongs to productinium, symbol PA. It, it is a solid at room temperature. It's an actinide. Protactinium is silvery gray. It is dense. It's malleable. It's radioactive. And it currently has no uses. Uranium, very famous. Its symbol is U. It's a solid at room temperature. It's an actinide. It's silvery gray in color. Uranium is known for its radioactivity. Although radium beats it for by around five or 10 times, uranium is slightly paramagnetic which means it is weakly attracted to magnetic forces, but very slightly. Uranium is used in some, uranium is of course used in nuclear reactors, nuclear weapons like nuclear bombs, etc. Neptunium, yeah, we will now be continuing the trends of naming elements after planets. Like it will end at element 94, but still, its symbol is NP. It's a solid at room temperature. And yes, it's named after Neptune, it's an actinide. Neptunium is having a silvery color. It is synthetic. Yeah, now all the elements now towards the end, starting from atomic number 93, not are going to be synthetic. Also, as I said earlier, technetium and pruta. And also, as I said earlier, technetium and promethium are also synthetic. Neptunium is radioactive. And it has no uses as of today because very little of it has been produced. And one more thing about Neptunium. And one more thing about these synthetic elements. How are these synthetic elements named? By the, how are these synthetic elements made? By the way, I'll be making this, I will be covering this in a future video, but for the basics, people, but for the basics, there is something known as a particle accelerator, which which by the way, accelerates particles at very high speeds, making them collide together, also known as neutron bombardment when they do so. And in, and there are very few of these, and there are very few of these particle accelerators around the world, just like five or six. And it takes a lot of tries to combine the nuclei or the center of the atoms of certain elements in order to get a higher atomic number. Like for example, we've got for all the elements starting from element 93. That's what makes the elements synthetic. Although we have very few atoms of these elements. Plutonium, plutonium symbol is Pu. It's a solid at room temperature. It's an actinide, it's silvery gray. It's synthetic again. Plutonium is radioactive. It's toxic and it's used as a satellite power source. It's used in, it's used in nuclear weapons, poisons, etc. Americium, yes, that's how it's pronounced. It's named after America, by the way. Americium is having the symbol of AM. It's a solid at room temperature, pretty solid, right? Americium is an actinide. It's silvery white, it's synthetic, it's radioactive blah, blah, blah. And americium is used in some smoke detectors because it's pretty sensitive to smoke. Curium, named after Mafri Curie, and curium symbol is CM. It's a solid at room temperature. It's an actinide. It has a silvery white color. Curium is synthetic. It's radioactive. Curium is named after Mafri and Pierre Curie. And yeah, their names are pronounced like that. Curium is used as a fuel for RTG appliances and other space applications. Pretty cool. Berkelium, named after Berkeley. Its symbol is BK. It's a solid at room temperature. It's an actinide. It's having a silvery white color again. It's synthetic, 
it's soft, it's radioactive, and berkelium is named after Berkeley, which is in California, where it was synthesized. Californium, named after, of course, California, coming with the symbol of CF, with this, with its state being a solid at room temperature, it's an actinide. Californium has a silvery color and it is synthetic as well as soft and radioactive. California is you Californium is used in some metal detectors and few other uses. And yeah, I'm talking like a game show host now. Regardless, Einsteinium, which is my favorite element, not one of my favorites, my favorite. Einsteinium symbol is ES. It is a solid at room temperature. Einsteinium is an actinide. It has a silver color. It is radioactive and very little of it has been produced. Einsteinium has a bluish glow when it decays. I really love it. It is of course named after the genius Albert Einstein and Einsteinium currently has no uses. It was actually discovered after the first nuclear holocaust. Fermium, atomic number 100, 18 more elements left. Let's go, go, go. Its symbol is FM. It is a solid at room temperature. Fermium is an actinide. It is, a sil it is silvery. It is radioactive. It is the last macroscopic synthetic element, which means ma macroscopic, macro means big, and scope means to see, which means it's the last element produced in large quantities, which is synthetic in nature. Fermium is named after the physicist Enrico Fermi, who, by the way, discovered lots of things related to atoms. For example, nuclear fission and nuclear fusion and other things. You can check out my video on atoms in the description as well as the eye pole. Mendelevium, its symbol is MD. It's an actinide. Mendelevium is a solid at room temperature. It's the first synthetic non-macroscopic element, as I just explained. Mendelevium is highly radioactive. It's named after Dimitri Mendeleev, the creator of the first periodic table. Mendeleev has no uses yet. Let's just speed run this. Nobelium, its symbol is NO. It is a solid at room temperature. It's an actinide. It's toxic. It's radioactive. It's named after Alfred Nobel, after which Nobel Prizes are also named. And Nobelium has no uses yet. Laurentium, named after, with the symbol LR, solid at room temperature, actinide, it's radioactive. Laurentium is named after the scientist Ernest Lorenz. It has no uses yet. Rutherfordium, with the symbol of RF, coming in with a predicted phase of being a solid at room temperature. Rutherfordium is a transition metal, which means it's the, it's a transition metal which means the actinide series has ended in the periodic table. Rutherfordium is radioactive. It is named after the famous physicist Ernest Rutherford, who's conducted the famous, who's conducted the famous Rutherford, who's conducted the famous gold foil experiment. We'll make a video about that later. Rutherfordium currently has no uses. Dubnium is the next element. Atomic number 105, its symbol is DB. It's a solid at room temperature. It's a transition metal. Look at the animations. It's radioactive. Dubnium is synthetic. It is named after Dubna, which is located in Russia, and it has no uses yet. Seaborgium is pretty interesting. I'll tell you why. Seaborgium symbol is SG. It's a solid at room temperature, or at least that's predicted of it. It is a transition metal. It is synthetic, radioactive, blah, 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 and named after the scientist Glenn Seaborg. Seaborgium, along with the last element of an eson, is the only, Seaborgium is one of the only two elements named after a living scientist. God damn, I wish, I, I wish if I discovered an element I could name it after me, but I guess I may have to kill myself right after naming it. Bohrium, again named after a dead scientist. Bohrium symbol is BH. It is a solid at room temperature. At least that's what's predicted of it. It's a transition metal. Bohrium is radioactive. It's synthetic. Named after Niels Bohr, a very famous physicist who's made plenty of this, 
who's made plentiful discoveries related to atoms. Hassium, its symbol is HS. It is a solid at room temperature. It's a transition metal. It's highly radioactive. Hassium is synthetic. It is named after HES, which is located in Germany, where it was synthesized, probably. Hassium currently has no uses. Mitnarium, mark. Mitnarium's symbol is MT. It is a solid at room temperature. It is a transition metal. Mitnarium is radioactive. It's synthetic. It's named after the scientist Lise Mitnor. And it has no uses yet. Darmstadtium, symbol DS, solid at room temperature. That's what's predicted of it. It's a transition metal with the atomic number 110. Eight more elements left. It's synthetic. It is radioactive. Darmstadtium is named after Darmstadt, Germany. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Germans. Darmstadtium has no uses yet. Rontgenium. Rontgenium symbol is RG. It's a transition metal. It is mostly non-reactive, like, you know, platinum, gold, and ruthenium, rhodium, etc. Rontgenium is named after Wilhelm Rontgen. At least, I hope I'm pronouncing that right now. And this scientist actually discovered X-rays. Rontgenium is used in the production of heavier elements, and it has the atomic number 111. Copernicium, its symbol is CN. It's a solid at room temperature. It's transition metal. It's very inert. Copernicium is radioactive. It's named after Nicholas Copernicus, who is a famous mathematician and or an astronomer. Nihonium. Nihonium with the symbol of NH. Solid at room temperature. That's what's predicted of it. Nihonium is a post-transition metal. It's highly radioactive. It, and did you know that Nihonium's most stable isotope or basically its form lasts for only about four seconds? That's Valus and Francium. Nihonium is synthetic and it is named after the Latinized version of the Japanese word for Japan, which is Nihon. Pretty cool. Flerovium. Flerovium symbol is FL. It's a solid at room temperature. That's what's predicted. It is extremely radioactive. Flerovium is a post-transition metal. It can be formed in nuclear reactors, as I explained. And it's named after the flare of laboratory of nuclear reactions. Just look at the scientist's eyebrows. So cool. Moscovium, its symbol is MC. It's a solid at room temperature. It's a post-transition metal. It's radioactive. It decays quickly into other elements. That's what's basically expected of all the heavy elements because they are unable to sustain themselves. Muscovium is named after Moscow, which is located in Russia. Livermorium, its symbol is LV. I like its symbol. It's a solid at room temperature. It's a post-transition metal. It's synthetic. It's extremely radioactive and Livermorium and Livermorium's atom decays in milliseconds, which is way less than a second. A thousand milliseconds is equal to one second. Livermorium is named after the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, kind of like Laurentium, right? Tennessee, atomic number 117. This is the second to last element. Tennessee in symbol is TS. It's a solid at room temperature. That's what's predicted of it. And one interesting thing about tennessee is that it's a halogen, which means it is the heaviest of all halogens. Tennessee is synthetic as well as having a predicted black color. Tennessee could also be a solid, by the way, which would be pretty cool because it might be a black gas or a black solid. As I said, the further down in the periodic table you go, the darker the halogens get. Tennessee's atoms are very few. Only a few atoms are made. And it's named after Tennessee, which is located in USA. Atomic number 118. The last element, organesson. Its symbol is OG. That's pretty cool. Organesson's predicted phase at room temperature is of a solid. 
it is the last element in the periodic table and surprisingly it is non-reactive and it's a noble gas it's the heaviest current element in the periodic table i am waiting for more elements to get discovered by the way and yeah it's a noble gas but it could be a solid because it's super heavy organeson is synthetic it is radioactive and it is named after the living scientist yuri organesian thank you all for watching this periodic table ppt if you enjoyed it i hope you guys did please subscribe because it took a lot of effort into making this please comment below what future ppts we should make and what long projects we should work on at the scientific pros there are a lot more elements i'm excited for to be discovered and I have done a lot of research for this video. Regardless, stay scientific.